Hey everybody, Sean Halley from Line 6, today on behalf of the James Tyler Variax, and today is the first time I've ever had all three on film, which would be kind of fun. So the James Tyler Variax is the only guitar on the planet that can be 29 different personalities at once. It has 28 different vintage instruments loaded into it, some electric, some acoustic, and it also has its own magnetic pickups to perform in the analog domain. So it has a virtual bunch of personalities and also a real uh, analog personality as well. So it has the ability to retune itself, um, either with tunings that come loaded on the instruments themselves, and they differ, uh, as well as uh, something we call virtual capo, where you can do your own tuning right on the fly, or uh, in new firmware, you can also use a Pod HD 500 to control the tuning on a preset by preset basis, which is kind of cool. So there are three different body styles. There's the 59, which is more of the less poly kind of guitar. You have the 69, which is a little bit more Stratocaster centric. And you have the 89, which is what I'm holding here, which is more of the sort of rock shredder kind of a guitar. All three guitars were designed by James Tyler, who is a luthier to the stars here in Los Angeles and basically builds guitars for the elite in the guitar world. So we were very happy that he agreed to consult on these guitars when we were coming up with new versions. All of the neck shapes, the body shapes, the bridge designs, the pickups, everything are all his design. So the 89 is certainly built for the modern rock guitar player. You can tell from the body shape, from the headstock, all sorts of cues to give you an idea of maybe who we designed it for. Um, it has very aggressive, modern sounding rock pickups in it, which are great. Jim uh, did a really good job on these, as he did with all of them. And the neck is interesting as well. While it is more slender, um, which a lot of rock guys will appreciate, it is not a ruler, um, which I like. Like a lot of those kind of guitars that came out in the late 80s, early 90s, sort of had that little paper thin neck that was kind of hard to play. This, while being slender, actually is very comfortable. It reminds me a lot more of my early pre-production Charvel I used to have with the Harley gas tank flames on it. Now, the Variax guts inside the guitar are the same as all of the other two in the family, but the tunings uh, in terms of uh, um, that are loaded onto the knob are different. So they're designed to get you up and running really quickly so you don't have to do any changing if you just want to go and play a bunch of rock stuff. So it has drop B, it has drop C, it has down a minor third, down a major third. So it can help you immediately emulate seven string or uh, extremely drop tuned metal kind of a style. So all of the musical examples are basically the same setup, what we call the dream rig. The James Talavari Axe connected over VDI to a pod HD 500. That is going L6 link to a DT50 head, and that's going into a, a speaker cabinet in the other room with a ribbon mic on it, and it's coming back into the studio in a tube mic pre so we can hear it. <laughs> Now I'm holding the 59. Uh, this is certainly more of the Les Paul-centric kind of an inspiration for this guitar. Shorter scale length, much thicker neck, um, pickups probably a little bit warmer, a little bit more vintage-y, but certainly still plenty of gain, and a uh, different set of tunings. So the tunings are primarily the same on the tuning knob between the 59 and the 69 as well. So lots of open G, open A, drop D, down a whole step, that kind of stuff. So, the guitar um, basically works the same way uh, as the other ones do, very X-wise. So you have a three position switch here. So even though there's only three, uh, you can get to all five of the switch positions just by hitting the second knob, which gets you position two and position four. In the next example, uh, I'm going to basically use uh, the Variax model inspired by Les Paul Jr. for a swaggery kind of a, um, a glam rock kind of guitar part. And then the second half, I will do a little Denny Diaz uh, homage with the sitar sound. So hopefully that makes sense. And here we go.
So we've moved on to the 69, which is the Stratocaster-centric guitar in the line. So it has a few hardware differences uh, than the other two. For one, it has a two-post tremolo and locking tuners as a result. It has single coil pickups in the neck and the middle, and then the humbucker and the bridge. And it has the same black tusk nut that the other two have as well. So the neck shape is between the size of the 59 and the 89. It's not quite as large as the 59 is, uh, but it's not certainly as slender as the 89 is. It's right in the middle. Uh, super comfortable. This is my main guitar. Uh, this is the one I use for everything, all my sessions and all my live gigs now. It's basically been the main guitar I use. Now, I want to make sure that I mention the integration between the Pot HD 500. It's important to remember that you can pass both the magnetic pickups and the Variax technology out different pipes so they can be processed through different amps differently. Uh, the HD500 can remember tunings for you on a preset by preset basis, do all sorts of stuff. And you can also use these knobs now as continuous controllers for parameters inside the pod. So I did a video on that. You can check that out on YouTube. Now, the upcoming musical example is kind of like an 80s session guitar kind of a sound. So you've got a tri-stereo chorus thing in there. You've got a delay thing. The initial delay thing is through a pretty heavy compression, and it's the magnetic pickups. Everything after that is Variax. So the second sound is a Variax Strat. The third sound, the lead sound, is actually a Les Paul through sort of a Mesa-esque emulation in the DT50. So I'll be right back after that. <laughs> So hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the stuff that's possible with the James Tyler Variax and a Dream Rig. If you're interested in this technology, I would suggest, if you can, to go try and play all three guitars. The reason I say that is because the neck shapes are different, the scale lengths are different, the body contours and shapes and things are different, and you might find one guitar that speaks to you much more so than the other two do. That's actually by design. They were designed to be three very different guitars with a similar design philosophy and the same Variax guts inside because they're wood. They're actually real guitars with pickups and stuff. Even though it has a 12 hour battery, if that battery goes dead or if you forgot to charge it or if right now, like I don't even have a battery in there because I've been connected over BDI to my Pod HD 500, which powers the guitar. In this case, the guitar still works. The magnetic pickups still work. It's still a real guitar. It's one you can fall in love with and have it be your main guitar like this one is mine, which is why it has nicks and cuts on it because it's the one I use for everything. If you have any more questions, check out line6.com, check out the videos on YouTube, and thanks very much for your time. Cheers.